Hello, Uggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Tonight we're going to take a look at a question that many, many people have asked me. And now I've got a definitive answer. This comes to us through a question through uh, ke0og.net slash ask hyphen Dave from William Riordan. And he asks very simply, in the age of COVID, I can't find a testing site. The ARRL form does not come up with any viable sites. I watch your videos often and find them useful. So maybe you could help me solve this one. Thank you from Bill R. Let's take a look at something here. This is the ARRL website and the address for it is right up here. I'm going to zoom in on that a little bit and we're going to move the uh, form up to here. It's ARRL.org slash find online exam. Okay, ARRL.org slash find online exam. And this is what you get when you go to that website, okay? Uh, it talks about finding, uh, if you can't locate an in-person exam session, this is what you do. Now, the first thing it's going to list are the ARRL affiliated examiners. And then down at the very bottom, it's got a link to hemstudy.org, which has a whole bunch of additional uh, non-ARRL uh, exam givers to do it. So there's lots of opportunities here. But what I want to do, in addition to going through this list, is talk to you a little bit about what's involved in an online exam session. First, let's zoom in on this and get this uh, just where we need it here. Okay, we're going to find an online amateur radio license exam. Okay, now there's a lot of information here, and most of the people who do this do it about the same. Now, it's going to take some preparation on your part to be ready for this. You can't just, oh, I think I'll take an exam right now and go do it. The first thing you need to do, of course, is what you would have to do uh, going to a regular exam session anyway, is get yourself registered with the FCC. You need your, um, let's see, it's an FRN. FRN, FCC registration number. I have mine up on my license here. I've got a printed copy of my license. And it used to be that when you went to an exam session, the paperwork that was sent in would initiate the FCC giving you an FRN. That is no longer true, okay? You have to get that beforehand. It's just a matter of going to the FCC website and logging on. But now let's go down here and look at some of the uh, things that they talk about. Okay, the online exam taking process is more complicated and takes more time than the in-person exams. The examinee must read, agree to, and follow the specific VE team requirements. They're a little different for each team, okay? Um, and so as we work our way down through here, we've got a list of ARRL VE teams offering online exams. So let me get this thing parked in the right place. Okay, whoops. And we'll just scroll down through here. We've got uh, Park uh, is available, the KG4PJE VE team. And they've got requirements, information, and scheduling. You need to go to this website. Columbia University ARC, okay. New England Amateur Radio Club, okay. Let's just take a look at the requirements. Okay, this is New England SciTech, STEM Education Center and Marketplace, Ham Radio Test Online. And they talk about how it will take, or what it will take you to do this. First of all, they don't want you to get on here just to try an exam. Uh, 
because they've got a bunch of resources here that are focused on this. And if you're just going to come in and play, they're not interested. I know that sounds harsh, but what they're saying is please don't come until you're really well prepared. And they suggest that to make sure you are well prepared, you should be consistently scoring above an 88% on the online practice exams. And then schedule an appointment. There's a place to go to schedule an appointment. And uh, this place here, okay, has got a form that you need to go through and uh, certify that you are prepared to take the exam, okay? And um, they've, let's go back to where we were the previous one, okay? Um, you can only take one exam per session. This is different from your normal uh, in place where if you pass the tech, you can try the general. Please only one and go through the process again. Uh, the exam manager will send you a uh, CSCE. Uh, there's privacy things to keep in mind. Note that your address and things will go into a public database. Okay. Now I use my post office box, which is okay. Didn't used to be okay, but is okay now. And you can use your post office box. If you're a student or something, you might want to use your parents' address so that you make sure because this is an address that the FCC will use if they need to get in touch with you for any reason. And if they cannot get in touch with you through this address, they may just throw your license away. So you want to be sure that it's an address that will get uh, to you. The exam fees there, uh, your federal registration number, uh, the qualification questions, they will ask you to show photo IDs and so on. Now, this next part is very important. Prepare the exam room of everything, basically. Pre get everything out of there. Papers, notes, posters, computer screens, calculators, watches, anything that could aid in taking the exam. It says many people just use a bathroom. It's a lot easier. Another possibility is a closet. You may not be in an outdoor space or in a vehicle, okay? You have to clear everything out of the way. Um, you can't have any virtual backgrounds. Now they're gonna use Zoom um, and you can't, in Zoom you can have a virtual background, but you can't for this. It has to be the real background, okay? Uh, they don't want any interruptions during the exam or that could cause the exam to end. There should not be, since the examiners are going to be listening to you, there shouldn't be barking dogs, loudly meowing cats, children running in and out, um, and so on. So you're going to have to prepare your family for when you're doing this, you really do need to be alone in that room, okay? And then you need two, quote, computing devices, usually a laptop because they want a built-in camera and a built-in microphone, and then your cell phone. Now, what's going to happen is you're going to have a Zoom session on your computer and a Zoom session on your telephone, your phone. And your phone is going to be placed over here where you get a picture of you and what's going on around you and you are looking at the screen. The only things you can have on the screen, you can bring up a calculator and it has to be over on the left side of the screen and you can uh, have just the one thing that will allow you to see the web and then there will be your zoom Thing over on the side. So they tell you very specifically how this has to be arranged. No other tabs can be opened, no uh, interruptions from uh, messaging systems, anything like that. Anything like that could cause them to terminate the exam. Basically, they're going to ask you to do a visual sweep of the room so that they can see there's no material in it of any kind. They want to listen to you. They'll be looking for hearing you on the keys and so on like that. They want to hear you and they want to watch you during the exam. 
Now, remind you, remind you that the volunteer examiner is responsible to make sure that this exam is done right. And if there are issues with the exam, not only do they come talk to you, but they will talk to the examiner as well. So don't get the examiner in trouble by trying to sneak uh, some kind of strange thing in there. Just play it straight. Okay, and it tells you very specifically all the things that you're going to have to do. And your smartphone, uh, it's good if you have a little tripod for your smartphone. I don't have one. Probably should get one. But they make little tripods for your smartphone because it needs to be out here where it can see you and see your computer screen. Okay, and you have to be prepared about 45 minutes in advance of the examination. Now, then the exam manager will read all of the protocols. They'll ask you to hold up your driver's license and other ID where the camera can see it. You will have already paid your exam fee, which varies from uh, VE to VE. Okay, so this gives you an idea of what you are looking at. Now let's go back to the league um, form here. Okay, so that was the, Colum um, let's see, the New England Amateur Radio Club. There's also uh, the WB9, ZPH, fully remote exams, uh, and so on. In Minnesota, Ham Education Group, which is in uh, AH, it would be Hawaii, uh, Volunteer Examiners of Australia, okay, and so on. Here's Las Vegas, which is the Las Vegas area only. And then at the very end, they have this. If examination spots are unavailable through these teams, search for additional examination dates and teams here. This puts you into hamstudy.org. Hamstudy.org shows you, uh, you want to do just this, click on this show online. So you can see the ones that are uh, set up. Now note that just because they're doing it online does not mean that these people will be able to do thousands of exams at once. It's sometimes one exam. You have the full attention of the three VEs. Okay, so make sure you schedule these in advance. I know this is different from a lot of the uh, walk-in sessions because the walk-in sessions a lot of times, not always, will accept people who just show up. Okay, that is not true here. Now you can go down and, and see they show where the sessions are, like this one has two slots remaining and uh, so on. Now these are VE teams other than the ARRL. So you get the whole kit and caboodle right here. So just to reiterate, we have gone to um, the ARRL, to ARRL.org slash find online exam. And yeah, that's two E's in a row, online exam. Uh, all one word, and then it shows you how you can find these exams. So there you have it. This gives you an overview of essentially all the exams taking place in the United States. And now you can go get your ham license and become a ham or upgrade to general or upgrade to extra. It will be different it will take a lot more of your time than walking into an exam session and you need to do preparatory work. Get your FRN, get all the way signed up for these things. Make sure that you have some way to hold your phone so that it can take a picture of you. Get a little tripod for it, you can get them anywhere. And then your laptop has to have an internal camera. Now I'm using a a tower-based computer. It's right down here. Uh, it's a computer that I built. Uh, Brad Rich N6GR really helped me out on getting this thing built. And it has a separate camera and a separate mouse and a separate um, keyboard. I would not be able to use this for an online exam. I'd have to use a laptop. Fortunately, I've got a couple old laptops that still work and still run Windows 10. Now, 
if you are in the habit of using an external mouse with your laptop, get used to using the laptop without the mouse because they may not let you use any attachments of any kind, just the laptop. That's all that's there. I presume you can plug it in. It doesn't have to run on a battery. Okay. So I hope that helps uh, give you a little bit more understanding of what you need to do to take exams online. So COVID is not the kind of thing that would stop you from uh, getting your amateur exam. But like so many other things, the COVID does change the approach and how it's done. Now, I'm going to make a prediction here. And that prediction is we're going to start to see more of these online exams and rather than fewer. Like, for example, here we are in Western Colorado and we have our club's VE group, which gives exams six times a year maybe less than that, five, five times a year. And if you're not on that right date, mm, my goodness. But here, as we saw at Ham Study, there are exams practically every day. And you can pick one. You want to first get to about 88% on all of those online tests. And then you go through the process of setting the thing up and getting everything that you need. I hope you will do it. Remember, my favorite word in ham radio is persevere. So you will persevere to get the session you want, the time you want. You'll have everything ready, and you'll go through the process painlessly. The exam materials are usually filed with the FCC that same night. And... In two or three days, you could have your ticket. It actually could go faster because the ARRL normal walk-in sessions, they have to mail the paperwork to Newington. Here, everything is done electronically. So that'll be great. So thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, please subscribe to this channel. Um, I'm trying to emphasize subscriptions more because more non-subscribers watch than subscribers. I'd like to turn all of you non-subscribers into Augies. And the way that you do that is by subscribing. Also, please check out decastlercom support for different ways that you can help fund this channel. Until we next meet, 73.